Snakes are some of the most specialized organisms on the planet, and while many species do have pretty specific habitat or prey requirements, there are others which are perfectly capable of thriving right alongside humans. And my goal in today's video is to find three of the most commonly encountered backyard snakes here in North Carolina, showing you how to easily identify them and what adaptations make them so successful at surviving in these human-modified landscapes. I decided to begin my backyard snake search in a forested area right beside my apartment complex, and it didn't take me very long to spot exactly what I was expecting. All right. Hey, 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 it's okay. Well, he's bigger than I thought he was, actually. This is the racer snake, and this is widely considered to be the most generalist large colubrid that we have here. Watch out, watch out. In the eastern U.S. Now, you can see that temperament-wise, this is not a snake that really enjoys being handled. These are super active diurnal foragers. These are really visual hunters. They have these huge eyes and they have binocular vision just like we do. You'll see these in the afternoon just out racing around, eating basically anything they can catch. In fact, some of the larger racers, like uh, probably around this size, have been found with baby king snakes actually in their stomachs. So even those larger species that are known to eat other snakes can still fall prey to racers. Now, part of the reason they are so successful is because of that dietary generalism, but also their habitat generalists. So as long as there's sunlight and prey, you can probably find racers. And he's really locked onto my eyes right now, so he might take a nip at my nose. Let me, yeah, there he goes. Now, just because these are common and generalistic, I don't think it makes them any less cool than our other large colubrids, and they are really beautiful. You can pretty easily identify a racer because as adults, they're gonna be this really glossy, almost kind of blue-black all the way around, except for one spot on their chin. It's like they have a little white beard or a little white goatee. And that I think is the easiest way to tell a racer snake. But honestly, usually you're only gonna see these for a few seconds while they're out foraging before they dive back into a stump hole or into the underbrush. So I would not count on having a really good look at a racer snake if you do see one in your backyard or at a local park. Based on the tail length, I think it's a big male, but he's hot, it's the afternoon, and he's probably out hunting lizards right now. So I'll go ahead and set him right back down. And look, he's about to take another chomp of my nose if I don't move. That is a beautiful racer and awesome backyard snake. All right, you can go back, buddy. Oh, look at that. Oh, look at the tail go. Yeah, that's a big racer. While racers are probably the most common large backyard snake here in North Carolina, they aren't always the most amicable. So I decided to head to a local park in search for a much friendlier species of snake, which is actually commonly confused for racers. Okay, this right here is one of my absolute favorite, probably my favorite backyard snake. It's cold, it must've just come out of the ground. It might be, this might like literally be its first day on the surface. Look at this thing. That is a beautiful rat snake. Absolutely gorgeous, and it's so cold. It's probably gonna heat up quite a bit as I film. See if we can get it up here. Look at that. That is a gorgeous rat snake. I'll switch the camera around, and then let's talk all about this amazing species. Now, not every backyard or park is going to have one of these snakes, but if you live especially in an area that's pretty heavily wooded, there's a very good chance that there are eastern rat snakes in your local area. These are known to be extremely proficient climbers, especially in the earlier spring when birds are nesting, rat snakes are frequently going to be raiding treetops to try and eat the eggs and the nestlings. Rat snakes are my favorite backyard snake for a few reasons, but I think the primary two are their size. So these are actually the second longest snake in all of North Carolina, only behind the coach whip, and also their temperament. This is a completely wild snake, and I know in previous videos where I featured black rat snakes, I've gotten a ton of comments asking, is it actually like your pet that you brought out? No, I'm not bringing these snakes out into the woods and like laying them down and picking them up and filming them. This is just how rat snakes act. These are super chill snakes, and really they're more curious than they are defensive most of the time. So in your backyard ecosystem, if you are lucky enough to have rat snakes, these are also one of the most beneficial snakes that you can have around because I know it's in the common name, but these are in fact rodent specialists. So these are free pest control for you 
and I'm pretty sure you would rather have a rat snake in your yard than an infestation of mice or rats or squirrels in your house. Now, in terms of identifying black rat snakes, as adults, kind of like racers, you can look for that jet black dorsal coloration throughout most of their range. Although there is a coastal variant, depending on where in the eastern U.S. you are, that might be more yellowish or greenish and have some dorsal stripes which go all the way down the body. And then if we look at the underbelly here, you'll see that's also different than racers. With rat snakes, you'll often get more of a white and black checkerboard pattern on the belly. What a gorgeous individual. This is the first rat snake that I've had the pleasure of encountering this year in one of the largest individuals I've ever seen in the wild. Always such a joy to work with this species. We'll grab just a few B-roll shots and get this awesome backyard snake back in the wild. Okay, now I'm gonna sit down right here because you can't probably see it, but there is a hidden stump hole right in this leaf pack. And I think that's actually where it was brumating. So yeah, if I sit it down, you'll see he's crawling right underground. With both of the large terrestrial backyard snakes under my belt, I decided to begin searching for one of the most commonly encountered and misidentified semi-aquatic snakes that are commonly encountered here in the Piedmont of North Carolina. Real quick before this next snake encounter, if you could take a second to check out your notification preferences for the wild report and just make sure that notifications are turned on for new videos because I've had a few people reach out recently and say they thought I'd quit YouTube because they weren't getting notified when I was making new posts. Okay, back to the adventure. You look pretty chunky. Wow. You are chunky. It must, oh, here it goes. So this is kind of like a little bonus. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, brother, it's okay. It's not biting me, which is kind of weird. It's probably gonna start pretty soon, maybe not. So this is kind of like a little bonus backyard snake. Not every backyard is going to have these, but if you have a water feature of any kind, if you have a creek, if you have a pond, something like that here in the Eastern US, this is probably a snake that you can also expect to see in your backyard or at a local green space. This was formerly called the Northern Water Snake. I think they've updated the common name and this is now just called the Common Water Snake. If that tells you anything about how likely you are to encounter this species. Unfortunately though, these, because of their patterning size and overall body shape are really easy, if you don't know what to look for, to confuse for the most common venomous snake here in the Eastern US, the Copperhead. Both of these species have kind of this brownish, stripey-ish pattern. But if you look at the first half of the body of our northern water snake, you'll see that the stripes are actually thickest on the back. And it gets thinner as you go down towards the belly. And then right around halfway, like literally right here down the body, they pattern switches. And now it's more of a square blotch pattern on the dorsum of the snake. And that's completely different than copperheads. Copperheads, if you looked at the side here, you would see thick at the bottom and it gets smaller as you go towards the dorsal ridge there. So like a Hershey kiss shape, which I've talked about in previous videos. Being one of those pretty common, pretty generalistic snakes, northern waters are not often highly desired by the herpetological community, but they have a pretty impressive, I would say, variety and patterns and colors throughout their geographic range and just across different individuals. And one of my favorite things to look at with this species is the underbelly is really, really stunning on some individuals, and this one it is. This is a great individual to work with, a really excellent example of this species, and a pretty typical color morph and patterning too. So we'll get it right back in the wild. Now at this point, I had already accomplished my objective of finding three of the most commonly encountered large backyard snakes in North Carolina. So I decided to switch gears a little bit and search for a much smaller species, which is technically the most common urban snake in the Eastern US. And I found one, filmed a whole segment with it, and then somehow lost all of that footage. So I tried to find another one and I just couldn't do it in time for this video. So here's a little consolation prize. It's not even DK's brown snake either. He's kind of cute. Okay, we'll take it, we'll take it. This might be maybe now the most commonly featured snake on my channel. This right here, of course, as you probably come to expect from me, is yet another Eastern worm snake. This is, I think, the fourth one I found trying to find a DK's brown snake, which is supposed to be the most common yard snake here in the Eastern US. So this backyard snakes video you don't get a DK's brown snake, but I promise I'll do a part two from the DK's brown snake and maybe I'll do like a whole fossorials that live in your backyard video. In the meantime, identifying worm snakes is pretty easy. You're probably sick of hearing it by now, but they're kind of the only like pinkish snake that we have here, not on the top, but on the bottom. Flip it over and check that out. 
They're actually really pretty, honestly. So if you ever see a little teeny, pretty shiny snake that's pinkish or purplish on the bottom, and usually like a darker brown or gray on top, you know you've got a worm snake. I don't have to say anything else about them because I've said all the things already. If you're interested in learning even more about your scaly neighbors, I highly recommend attending free events hosted by great organizations like the NC Herb Society and NC Partners in Amphibian and Reptile Conservation, which are designed to get you comfortable with local species and also connect you with additional resources. Here's your sneak peek at the species that will be featured in the next episode of The Wild Report. But until then, stay curious and keep adventuring everywhere. This is Benzino of The Wild Report. Signing out.